I love power meter pedals, uh, especially if you have a few bikes, I think they're the best solution. It means no matter which bike you're on, you're getting exactly the same numbers from exactly the same power meter. Uh, they're super easy to install, like less than two minutes to take them off one bike and put them onto another. The batteries last for ages and all that good stuff. Previously, the only disadvantage of pedal based power meters was the price, but now the Magin P715s look to change that. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the price, I'm gonna talk about the stats, and I'm even gonna do some power meter comparison testing. So uh, yeah, let's have a look. So let's jump straight in with the price. These pedals retail for 499 US uh, dollars. Is that good? Is that bad? Let me look at my notes. Uh, the OG power meter pedals, the Favero Asio Maduros, uh, the official site currently on their main website is 569 euros. Uh, that works out at 670 US dollars. But if you're in the US, I think the official retail price is actually 799 US dollars, as that's the price I saw on Competitive Cyclist. Uh, so these are 499, the Asiomas are 799. That's like 40% cheaper, uh, but do you get 40% less quality? Let's have a look. Also, I wanna say that I hate making power meter review videos. Uh, if you think watching them is like watching paint dry, then making them is even worse, trust me. Uh, mad respect to GP Lama and all the work he does, but for me, yeah, I, it kills me. Also, full disclosure, my website, pandapodium.cc, sells a whole bunch of Magin stuff, and me, as China Cycling, I've been working with Magin for like eight years now. My original review video of their Gravit trainer and stuff, uh, I like Magin. I think most of the products are great products. Sometimes they miss the mark a bit, uh, but yeah, so as with all review videos you watch, take everything I say with a pinch of salt, And uh, but luckily, we're gonna do some black and white uh, objective uh, power meter testing and the numbers don't lie and we'll see what it is. So far on YouTube with these pedals, I don't think I've seen any comparison testing yet. You know, most YouTubers just open the box, throw them on the bike, go kill a dog, come back and tell you they work fine, something like that. So uh, yeah, we're gonna compare them to other power meters and we're gonna compare them to trainers and see how they hold up. Oh, also in the testing, two different riders because everyone has different pedaling uh, techniques and maybe that affects these and stuff. So yeah, I've got two different riders in the testing as well. But first, let's, uh, yeah, let's check out the stats on the power meter. So the stats, let me look at my notes. So claimed accuracy is plus or minus 1%. Uh, that's probably in a lab being ridden by a robot. You know, you're probably rarely gonna see that in the real world, but again, we'll look at that in the testing later. Uh, the claimed battery life is 120 hours. Uh, from my testing, I've been testing these now for three or four months. I'd say that checks out more or less 120 hours. I don't use a stopwatch, but it sounds right. Uh, batteries last for ages. You know, if you're riding 10 hours a week, that'll be like three months of riding. Uh, for me, anecdotally, I think I'm topping them up every like two months or so. But again, you connect to your, your head unit, head unit starts to tell you when they're running low battery. You charge them up with USB, super easy, and carry on riding. Another party trick of these pedals is they're available in both Shimano and Look Kio standards. So we've got Shimano SPD SL and Look Kio standards, so no matter which one you prefer, there's an option for you. You know, if you want Shimano with the Favero's, you gotta like take apart a Shimano pedal body and put the Favero insides in. With the Magin, no such trouble, it just comes like this out of the box. Uh, claimed weight is 157 grams per pedal. Uh, I weighed them back to back with my Asiomas and for a pair, they were 10 grams heavier than the Asiomas, so a point to Asioma there, but 10 grams, probably not gonna lose sleep over it. And with these being pedal-based power meters, you also get a bunch of smart metrics that you can only get from pedals, uh, such as power phase and riding position. You know, it can tell you how long you spent standing in the ride, how long you spent seated in the ride, that stuff. You've also got pedal smoothness and torque effectiveness. Uh, the stack height and the Q factor of these also within one mil of the Asiomas. So pretty standard stuff for pedal-based power meters. Uh, they do come with a two-year warranty. Uh, will they explode after the two years are up? I don't know. I've only been riding for four months. Uh, anecdotally, my Asiomas, uh, they were bulletproof, had them for five years, but then one day the battery died on it. It just wouldn't hold its charge anymore. And yeah, no way to fix it or anything. So yeah, they're basically scrap at this point. But Asioma, you do get in touch with them. Uh, you give them your serial number and stuff and they'll sell you another set of pedals for a bit of a discount. Is that something Magin's gonna be doing in the future? I do not know. That's a problem for down the line. But yeah, just something to bear in mind when you're investing in these platforms. One thing different to the Asiomas, in the box there are no cleats. 
Uh, I think this is a bit of a faux pas. You know, most of the pedal base power meters come with cleats, but yeah, in the box, no cleats. I talked to Majin and their logic was, oh, anyone who's buying power meter pedals probably has already had pedals before and therefore already has cleats. Ah, yeah, I get it. Uh, but I don't think the cost of cleats is that much. You know, throw some in the box. Don't be too, don't be too stingy. Um, also, I think they were worried about the cleats not being the same quality as the original Shimano cleats or the original look cleats maybe, and users having bad experience with cleats breaking too early and stuff. So I can kind of understand that. And at this price point, it's understandable. But uh, in my opinion, I would have given them an extra point if they had cleats in the box, but it is what it is. Uh, talking about the stats of the pedals, there is also one other thing that these pedals don't have, and that's PCO or pedal center offset. So the Asioma pedals, and maybe some of the other pedals, but I don't think so, uh, have pedal center offset. And basically, that's a way for the power meter to know how far from the gubbins, how far down the axle you, you're putting the torque through. You know, Most of us, when we're pedaling, okay, we, we put all of our power through the center of the pedal body, but some people, maybe caggy-footed or whatever, put more power to the outside or the inside. Now, I think Asioma has some patents on this and how they're putting the strain gauges to detect this, and so Magin weren't able to do that. Uh, so what that means is, in theory, you can make these overread or underread by based on where you put your torque through the pedal body. Because uh, obviously a, a longer lever here, you put more power here, it's gonna affect this, blah, blah. Uh, I think Peak Torque went into the details on it when he did his video on the look power meter pedals. I can't remember, I'll put a link in the description down below if you really wanna learn about power center offset. But long story short, yes, you could sit on the trainer and as you're pedaling, put your, put your power to the outside of the pedal and watch the number overread and then put it on the inside and watch it underread. But in real life, when you're pedaling, does it affect it? Again, we'll have a look at the testing data. Okay, so here we are in this power meter comparison tool. Like I say, I'm too cheap to pay for DC Rainmaker. This tool made by my web developer at Panda Podium, Chris. Shout out to Chris, I'll put a link to this tool down below. He's a bit of a wizard when it comes to web development stuff. But anyway, let's jump right in. Uh, so this was the very first ride I did on the pedals. So we had the P505 crank-based power meter, we've got the P715 pedal power meter, and we've got the Cyclus T3 trainer. So if we go into a section on here, so this was straight out of the box, like I said, uh, and if we have this section here, it's not great, but it's not terrible. So the P505's 179, P715's 175, and Cyc Plus 177. So all within like five watts of each other. Uh, is it, nah, I guess if you, if you took the middle one as the average, that's all within like one and a half percent of each other. Um, and again, all of these power meters are reading pedal power at different places, so some inaccuracy is expected. So this was, to say, the first test. Uh, this was like, uh, how long was this ride in total? This was, yeah, like an over hour long ride. Let's uh, have a quick look at the second half. So the second half of this ride, da, 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 again, 195, 191, 192. So I think, yeah, again, all within about 2% of each other on that one. Um, not amazing, but again, 2% <laughs> more than usable, more than usable. Like I said, that was the first test. Then I calibrated everything and did another small ride. Again, same, same couple of power meters. Uh, let's go back in here to this little session here. Looks like my timing goes off a bit. Also, when you're testing these power meters, that's another thing you've got to watch out for is bugs in the head units. Uh, GP Lama did a video on this recently. He had the same power meter connected to five different head units and all the different head units had totally different uh, power readings. So even with the same power meter connected to different head units, he was getting quite a variation of power. So bear that in mind when you look at these data. like I had essentially three different head units as well. I had the PC running Zwift, I had the Garmin, 1040 on the pedals, and I had the Magin head unit on the crank. Either way, different head units also interpret power differently, so being within one or two percent is already really impressive. That said, let's go back and look at these. So this section here, again, uh, 146.9, 144.3, and 145.5. Again, that's definitely within one percent of each other. For me, that's more than good enough. Uh, yeah, case closed. Uh, but like I say, power meters can 
behave differently on the trainer and off the trainer, indoors and outdoors. So this ride was my buddy James, and this ride was using the Shimano version as well. The, my indoor ones were on the Look version. So I gave these the Shimano version to my buddy James, and he was comparing them to the P505 on his bike as well. And again, if we look in here, so let's choose a section with no pausing first. And if we go down here, uh, 178.3 and 177.7. Uh, yeah, again, I think case closed within 1% of each other. Uh, now there is a bug on the uh, Garmin head units that when you stop pedaling, they hold the power for a few seconds. Uh, I think, again, this is something sh Shane was talking about in his other video, so I, I won't show any of the sections where you stop pedaling because that's a head unit issue, not a power meter issue. Uh, but let's have another look at one of these sections here, lungish section, uh, 180.2 and 180.99. Case closed, like within a watt of each other at this level. Uh, I'm impressed. And then if we look at one of James's uh, manly sprints, uh, if we look at the highest watts on here, so what we've got 1,111 versus 1,140. Uh, and again, yeah, that's uh, close enough. And again, you can see here on the 715s, which were connected to his Garmin, as soon as you stop pedaling, it stops. But on the P505 that was connected to the C606 head unit, I believe, when you stop pedaling, it holds the power for three seconds and then drops, which means if you look at the averages, the averages go a lot differently. But again, not a power meter issue. It's a head unit issue. Blah, blah, blah. While I was recording this, something I left out. Uh, but for me, power meter consistency is a lot more important than power meter accuracy. Uh, you guys remember a few videos ago, I did the aero testing of the Alley Sprint. And remember, I did uh, three different segments, uh, each of three Ks, and each going exactly at the same speed. And the power meter read exactly the same power, 140 watts, 140 watts, 140 watts. This was done with the Magine Pedals 2. So yeah, just more evidence that these things are consistent. So yeah, uh, super quick video. I don't think there's that need to go in dimension to it. You guys have seen the data. Uh, what do you think of these pedals? What's good, what's bad? Good, I think so far, as far as I know, this is now the most affordable power meter on the market. 499 US dollars, plentiful cheap. Again, I think in the future, I hope they get cheaper and cheaper and we can all get power meter pedals for $200. Uh, but this day and age, not happening quite yet. Too many patents and stuff. and too hard to get around so the big boys can keep the prices high. But yeah, 499 US dollars I think is a good investment. Second thing I love about these is the battery life, 120 hours. I think that's one of the best of any of the pedal based power meters out there, so super cool. Uh, another thing I like about them is that we get the choice of Luck or Shimano out of the box. Again, I like Luck pedals, but I know lots of you like Shimano pedals, so it's cool to have the choice. Uh, the next thing I like about them is the accuracy. For me, you just saw the data, more than accurate enough. Uh, again, there's, there is no PCO offsetting, so in theory, they can overread or underread, but as you just saw in the real world with real riders, my limited sample of two riders, which is still double what most people on YouTube use, uh, is, yeah, they work fine. And for me, my left ankle is messed up, got run over by a truck, you guys know the story, but yeah, my pedaling, if anyone's pedaling is gonna be wonky, it's gonna be mine, and for my riding, they're still accurate. Uh, let's move on to things that I don't like. Like I said earlier, no cleats in the box. It's not a deal breaker because Magina, right? Most of us already have cleats, but it would have been a nice thing. Uh, second deal breaker for some people, maybe lack of PCO. Again, I've just shown you that in the real world, it doesn't really make a difference, but it just gives the critics that one thing to keep nadding on about over and over again. The final quirky thing I don't like about these, uh, you'll notice we have Luck and Shimano style, and we also have black and silver here, but the black and the silver is nothing to do with Luck and Shimano. Both have both. Uh, so in China and a few other countries, uh, you can get these in black or silver, regardless of if it's Luck or Shimano. But for most of the world, they only come in silver. So on Pandapodium, we only stock them in silver. Uh, just makes life a lot easier because there's not many countries where you can get them in black anyway. Uh, we also can't sell them to Australia, Italy, or Germany. Uh, Magine has different distributors in different countries. It gets a bit complicated, but for the US, the UK, Canada, a bunch of other countries, we can sell the silver ones. So they are over there on the website now. But yeah, just super short, sweet video. 
Uh, that is the Magene P715 power meter. Uh, I'm gonna keep using it. Like I say, I've got a bunch of bikes and I'm happy having this on one bike and the Asiomas on the other bike and knowing that they're gonna be more or less the same. Don't have to worry about always using exactly the same pedals. And then with them being a lot more affordable, uh, you, you cry a lot less if they ever do get broken. Uh, lots of stuff coming up on the channel soon, including a look at this guy, this the new Yolio uh, gravel frame in my funky little paint job. Subscribe so don't miss that. If you do have any questions about these pedal-based power meters, put them in the comments down below. I'll be there answering questions, and maybe Majin will be answering their questions as well. So let's see. But yeah, other than that, I'll catch you next time. China Cycling, out.